Welcome back to Security Onion Essentials. In our previous session, installation part one, we downloaded the Security Onion ISO, verified it, created a virtual machine according to the minimum specs that we needed, and then actually ran through the first phase of the install, which was installing the operating system, CentOS 7. In this session, installation part two, we're now going to log back into that virtual machine, run through the Security Onion setup, let the install happen, reboot, and then log in a final time and make sure all these Security Onion services came up and installed correctly. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm starting off at the console of the virtual machine that I created in our previous session. And I'm going to go ahead and log in with the username and password uh, that we created in, uh, again, in the phase one or part one of the install. It's going to ask for my password again to run setup. And there we have the very first screen of the Security Onion setup. So a little bit of information here about uh, where you can find documentation and how to navigate through setup. So setup uses keyboard navigation. We can use our arrow keys to move around. Um, we may have lists. We can select a list uh, from the item using space and enter to proceed to the next screen. So I'm gonna press enter to continue. And uh, we have another option here. We can either just configure the network only or uh, run the standard Security Onion installation. Now networking will be configured as part of that since we're running the ISO version of the install. So I'll go ahead and select install. I'm gonna use tab to get over to the okay button and then press enter. Now choose install type. Uh, these should look familiar. We talked about this a little bit. We have a few different uh, deployment models for Security Onion. Eval, this is what we are gonna do in just a second. This is our evaluation mode. It's not for production. Our standalone where we install all of the different Security Onion components on one system. This is for a uh, production install, but a smaller network. We have distributed where we take all those components and install them on different systems. Uh, import node, this is a standalone system that you can import packet captures or EVTXs. Uh, it has very minimal uh, requirements, four gigs of RAM. And then we have some other uh, install types which we won't get into right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select eval with the spacebar, tab to the okay and keep on trucking. So starting in Elasticstack version 7.11, the Elasticstack binaries are only available under the uh, Elastic license, which is a free and open license. So we need to go ahead and agree to those terms. So enter the host name uh, that we'd like to set. I'm gonna say so-eval. Please select our management NICs. Now, uh, management NIC, now we have two different uh, NICs attached to this virtual machine. I'm gonna select ENS33 to be our management. Do we want to use a static or DHCP for IP addresses now? Um, if at all possible, you should always use static IPs. DHCP could certainly be used, but there's much higher risk of, let's say, you restart the system or it's been shut down for a, long, for a while and it comes back up and it gets a different IP address from your DHCP server, that's gonna really cause problems uh, inside the platform itself. So if at all possible, choose a static IP address. All right, so what uh, IPv4 address would we like to assign to it? For my network, it's gonna be 192.168.80.44. Uh, again, uh, input whatever makes sense for your specific network. 168.80.2. That's my gateway's uh, IPv4 address. I'm going to leave the default DNS servers. I'm going to leave the default DNS search domain. And setup is now going to initialize networking. Looks like it was successful. 
So how should this manager be installed? Now we have two different options here, standard or air gap. You only want to use air gap if the manager does not have internet access. Otherwise, let's go ahead and select standard. Since the manager does have internet access, uh, we are next asked of uh, how do you want to connect to the internet? Do we need a proxy for our environment? For my environment, it's just directly uh, connected. So I'm going to click on or select direct and uh, click OK. Setup is now running some pre-flight checks just to make sure that everything is going to successfully install and it can access the right uh, web resources, things like that. Next up, uh, Setup is asking us to add Nix to the monitor interface. I'm going to select ENS 37. Choose our operating system patch schedule now. Um, to be clear, the schedule that we set here is only related to uh, the operating system packages, not security onion related tools like Zeek and Elasticsearch and Kibana. All right, so I'm going to leave the default of automatic. Updates are installed every eight hours if available. Enter our home network, separating cider blocks with a comma. This is for a Circada uh, home net variable. We're going to leave the default here. Choose optional services to be enabled for this installation. Be aware that the more services you enable, the more RAM that is required. I'm going to leave the defaults. We'll take a brief look at these uh, in our next session. We have Grafana for system monitoring, OS Query and Fleet, which is an endpoint agent, Wazoo, which is another endpoint agent, Playbook is for writing detection plays, and Strelka is a file analysis framework. Uh, that's used when tools like Zeek extract files off of the network and then pass it over to Strelka uh, for further analysis. So I'm going to leave all those on by default and go on to the next screen. Do you want to keep the default Docker IP range? If you're unsure, please accept the default option of yes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select yes. Please enter an email address to create an administrator account for the web interface. This will also be used for Elasticsearch, Kibana, and Fleet. Now to be clear, the email that we enter here is not going to be used for um, sending or receiving email within the Security Onion uh, platform. All right, this email address is only used for uh, for as a username to log into these different applications. So I'm going to do mine. It's going to be analyst at uh, acmeonions.com. And my super secret password. Next up is how would you like to access the web interface? Now this trips uh, people up. So let's take it just a second here. We have really these first two options are the, the common ones, either IP or host name. So when you access the web interface for security, I mean, you're going to pop open your browser. You're going to type HTTPS and you're going to type in either the IP address for the manager, if you select IP, or the host name. Remember, I entered the host name for this box as SO-eval. So uh, I'm actually going to select host name. But if you do this, you have to make sure that the host name resolves to the IP address on your local system. All right, so make sure if you don't select IP, if you select host name, make sure that it resolves when you type SO-eval or whatever host name it is, it needs to resolve uh, that IP address on your local system. Would you like to configure the network time protocol servers or NTP servers? Yes, I'm going to leave the defaults here. Do I want to run SO-allow? By the way, we are almost done, so if you're getting a little screen overload right now or menu overload, no worries, we're, we're really close to being done. Uh, do you want to run SO-allow to allow other machines to access this Security Onion install via the web interface? Um, so by default, we lock down Security Onion so that the only ports accessible are port 22, SSH. Now, if you want to access the web interface on 443 or HTTPS, you need to run this tool, SO-allow, and allow a, an IP or an IP range so that your system can access uh, the web interface. Keep in mind, um, even if you can pull up the web interface, you still have to have a valid 
username and password before you can actually log in to Security Onion. All right, so I'm gonna say yes, I need to do this. I'm gonna say 192.168.80.0 slash 24. This means that any system on the 80 subnet will be able to um, access the web console, at least pull it up. Again, they'll still need to log in with a uh, valid username and password. All right, so that looks good. We now have a summary. Now you may notice that there's some, some options here that you didn't select, uh, like the log stash heap size and all that. That's, that's totally fine. We preset some of these defaults, especially in eval mode, uh, to what they need to be, all right? So if everything looks good, we're going to press tab to select yes. And it's gonna go ahead and run through setup. Now, uh, it's gonna take just a couple minutes, so I'm gonna pause the recording here and uh, go get a fresh cup of coffee, and I'll be back in just a minute once uh, setup has completed. All right, and we're back. Looks like the installation was successful. Uh, if it was not successful, there would have been an error message, and there would be some directions on how to recover uh, logs relevant to the error. We also have some information here on how to access the web interface, as well as press enter to reboot. So we're gonna go ahead and restart. And uh, while it does that, uh, I just wanna make a note that if you do have an error uh, during installation, please do not try to, do not restart it and try to use the system as is. Um, go back and either rerun setup, uh, troubleshoot and rerun setup, or you know, post on our discussion forums, find out what the root cause of the error is. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger here. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in again with the uh, username and password that I set up previously. We have a new, uh, some new information here, access the security onion web interface at HTTPS SO-eval. Uh, SO-eval was already run during the setup process, okay? Now first though, we're gonna run a little uh, security onion utility to verify that all these services on the box came up correctly. I'm gonna say sudo so-status. And it's going to go ahead and run. And what this, this little utility does is uh, checks all the different components on the box and make sure that they are up and running. As you can see, uh, there's still some in the starting phase, which makes sense. Our uptime on this box is just barely a minute, right? So let's give Security Onion just a couple more minutes. I'm gonna clear the screen and I'll pause the recording and I'll come back in three to four minutes and we'll verify that all the components are up and running. And we're back again just a couple minutes later. Let's go ahead and run that tool again, sudo so-status. I'm gonna pipe this out to less r just because of my screen size. You probably won't need to do that uh, for your system. And it looks like we're good to go. All the components are green and up and running at this time. So that's about it for this session. Uh, we went ahead and took the phase one installation where we installed the ISO and uh, ran through phase two, which is the Security Onion setup itself, ran all the way through the setup, uh, waited for Security Onion to be installed, rebooted, and then we confirmed that all the components came up and looked good. Uh, so at this point, um, next session, we're actually going to take a couple minutes and replay some uh, network traffic and look at all the different analyst tools that we have inside Security Onion. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you soon.